Hello. Imagine there's a projected teacher shortage of 90,000 teachers over the next decade. Pretend that you wanted to be a teacher and attended a teacher's college. You have only one requirement left to fulfill, student teaching. Assume that in spite of the projected teacher shortage, the education budget is cut nationally, which results in a limited supply of student teaching positions. Without student teaching, you can't get your teaching credential. Imagine that over the last five years alone, there were more than 40,000 students unable to find a student teaching assignment. They would have had to give up on a teaching career, find another job, and begin paying their student loans. How could such a bureaucratic slip up occur in view of the projected upcoming teacher shortage? Well, this is exactly what is currently happening in medical education. There is a projected shortage of 90,000 doctors over the next decade. Over 40,000 doctors in the last five years alone have been unable to match into a required residency. They cannot complete the last step required for a medical license. They have to leave medicine. After being accepted into medical school, four years of hard work, passing board exams, and graduating with an MD degree, they now have to look for other work and begin repaying an average of $183,000 in student loans. It is a classic case of bureaucracy where the right hand does not know what the left hand is doing. In 1997, the federal government's Balance Budget Act put a freeze on Medicare reimbursement for medical residency training slots. Yet, with a projected doctor shortage of up to 90,000 physicians in the next decade, the number of medical schools was increased. What a surprise! The number of medical schools increased at the same time as the number of required postgraduate training slots was reduced. This catastrophe has left more than 40,000 graduate doctors over the last five years alone with nowhere to go. This blog is designed to educate the public about this travesty. It is a call to action to those who can help rectify this ongoing catastrophe. The voices who can help include state and U.S. legislators, state and national medical societies, U.S. and foreign medical school deans, residency directors, medical students, physicians, public health departments, and finally, the media.